Hi, this is Pastor Roger Jimenez from Verity Baptist Church in Sacramento, California. Today I'm making a video to answer the question, do babies go to heaven when they die? I realize that this subject can be extremely emotional and difficult for some people. And what I would like to do in this video is to, as gently as possible, explain why I believe the Bible teaches that when a baby or a young child dies, they go to heaven. And hopefully that will be a comfort to some of you who have experienced the tragic loss of a child. The Bible clearly teaches that babies go to heaven when they die. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, in verse 22, David is speaking, and he's speaking after the loss of his newborn child. The Bible says this, And he said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me, that the child may live? In verse 23, he says this, But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him but he shall not return to me. In this passage, we see the confidence that David had, that although the child will not come to him in this life, that David would one day go to the child in heaven in the next life. And I believe that God had David speak these words and he put them in scripture to be a comfort to all of us, to know that when a child dies, a baby dies, that we will go to them and we will see them someday. This is not the only passage where the Bible refers to a baby or an infant that dies going to heaven. In Job chapter 3, we also see this teaching. Now in Job chapter 3, we have Job speaking, who's going through a major trial in his life. And he's actually saying and wishing that he wishes he would have died at birth or that he would have died as a result of a miscarriage uh, so that he would not have had to have gone through the things that he was going through in his life. And of course, he's going through a very dark time in his life and he's very discouraged. But I want you to notice what he says about the children who die at birth and who die as a result of a miscarriage. Job chapter 3 and verse 11, he says this, Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? In verse 16, he says, Or as in hidden untimely birth, I had not been, as infants which never saw light. And again, he's talking about, you know, why didn't I die at birth or why didn't I die as a result of a miscarriage? But I want you to notice what he says about where these children go when they die. Job chapter 3 and verse 17 says this, There the wicked cease from troubling. He says, where these children go when they die, they go to a place where the wicked do not trouble them. And there the weary be at rest. In verse 18 he says, there the prisoner rest together. He says, where these children go when they die is a place of rest. He continues and says, they hear not the voice of the oppressor. In verse 19 he says, the small and the great are there, and the servant is free from his master. He says the place where these children go when they die is a place where no one is oppressed, where people have freedom. In Job chapter 3 and verse 20, he says this, Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery, and life unto the bitter in soul. He says where these children go when they die, he said it's a place where people who lived miserable lives and who had bitter lives will find light and life. And what Job is saying is that when a child dies in the womb, or when they die uh, shortly after birth, they go to a place of rest, a place where they're not troubled by the wicked, a place where uh, there's light and life, where there's freedom. And what he's saying is that they go to heaven when they die. I would also like to answer this question. Why do babies and young children go to heaven when they die? And the answer to that question is because a baby or a young child is not condemned. The Apostle Paul teaches this concept in Romans chapter 7, verses 8 and 9. He says this, But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law sin was dead. Here he teaches that sin 
took the opportunity of the commandment. He said taking occasion by the commandment, he said it took the opportunity to kill me because without the law, sin was dead. He says that the power of sin to condemn us is in the law. In Romans chapter 7 and verse 9, he says this, For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. He says, look, I was alive spiritually once before I understood the law. But when the commandment came, when I understood the law, then sin revived and I died. And he's not saying that he died physically. He died spiritually. He became condemned. And an individual only becomes condemned after they understand the law. This is exactly what we see in the story of Adam and Eve. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 17, God says to Adam, he says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God says when you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, when you understand the difference between good and evil, he says on that day you'll surely die. And you know, the day that Adam and Eve ate of the tree, they did not die physically that day. They began the process of dying physically, but that day they died spiritually and they were condemned and they were in need of salvation. Romans chapter 3 and verse 20 says this, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. See, the keeping of the law cannot save us. All that the law does is condemns us. And when someone understands the law, they are condemned. But before they can understand the law, they are in a state of innocence where they're not condemned, and therefore they go to heaven when they die. This is often referred to as the age of accountability. And I'd like to give you a verse to kind of illustrate this for you. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 39, we see this age of accountability concept taught. Now, let me say this, Deuteronomy 139 is not about salvation, but we see the principle of the age of accountability. The Bible says this, moreover, your little ones, this is God speaking to the children of Israel, uh, before they go into the promised land. He said, Moreover, your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in hither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. See, God was telling the adults that because of their unbelief, they were not going to enter into the promised land. But he said that he was not going to hold his children accountable because when they made that decision, they were little and they had no knowledge between good and evil. And here we see that God makes a difference. He does not hold people accountable for his commandments or his laws when they are not able to understand the difference between good and evil. And this is why we believe babies and young children go to heaven because until they can understand the difference between good and evil, until they can understand the law of God, they are not condemned and therefore they go to heaven when they die. Now let me just say a couple things about the age of accountability. There's no set age. You know, every child may have a different age or a different time when they become knowledgeable and understand the law and understand what sin is and are in need of salvation. And this could also apply to people who have handicaps. Maybe somebody has a, a mental handicap and they can't understand. Their age of accountability might be much later than someone else or may, they may never reach an age of accountability. But God does not hold you accountable when you are not able to understand the difference between good and evil. Now, I often tell people this when I teach on this, is that a good rule of thumb, because people will ask the question, when should I start, you know, when can I know if my children are, you know, at the age where maybe they should get saved or I can at least start talking to them about the gospel and things like that. And a good rule of thumb is what we find in the scriptures with Adam and Eve, and it's when a child gets to the place where they become self-aware of themselves enough uh, to know when they're naked. That's what the Bible teaches. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6, the Bible says this, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves 
apron. See, before they knew the difference between good and evil, Adam and Eve were in a state of innocence and they did not know that they were naked. But once they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and they understood the law and the difference between good and evil and right and wrong, then they became aware of their own nakedness and they were ashamed of it. And you know, a baby is not aware of their nakedness. Even a toddler will, you know, run around naked and not even know it. You change their diapers or change their pull-ups and they don't, they don't, they're not aware of it. You could often, you know, give a bath to a two-year-old and a three-year-old and they don't think anything of it. But when they start getting to the age where they are aware of their nakedness and they start being embarrassed by it and they don't want to be naked around people, which is a natural and normal thing, then you realize that they are starting to become aware of themselves, starting to become aware of their surroundings, and they might be getting to the place where you can start giving the gospel to them and explaining the gospel to them so that they could be saved. But when children die in that state of innocence, I think the Bible is clear that they go to heaven when they die. And I hope that that will be a comfort to some of you who have gone through that deep tragedy of losing a young child or losing a baby or having a miscarriage. I'd like to leave you with one uh, more passage. In Luke chapter 18, verses 15 and 16, the Bible says this, And they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. I believe that heaven is filled with people who were babies and young children who died in their innocence and they're in heaven right now and one day their loved ones, if they are saved, will be reunited with them. And Jesus said that of these infants and babies, He said, of such is the kingdom of God. I hope that was a blessing to you and a help to you. If you like these videos, we want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have an idea of a video that we could make, maybe something going on in current events or a biblical question that we could answer for you, we'd love for you to leave that as a comment in the comment section below. And uh, I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.